thought I'd go over all the printed parts that we have um, just real quickly um, so you know what the names are. Uh, this is the hopper lower. This is the hopper upper. These are end caps. You need two of these. So there's a short and a long spline shaft. Crank handle. Face plate. You need two spacers. These two clips. Two Omega clips. Four Rams head clips. You need two wing gears and one center gear. The wing gears are the ones that nest into the gear and remain centered when the flexures are oriented opposite from one another. So they need to be like that. So these are, this is a wing gear. This is a center gear. Seven bearings, 608 bearings. You need two of these 52 tooth gears, two printed cams, a tray. You need a back plate, a front plate, movable baffle plate, short legs, long legs, eight springs, 16 follower pins. These should not have a ton of play to them, but they should also move freely. The eight Prusa tubes, a needle, knob joiner, printed knob, and this top clip. Tools you may need, leftover hex keys, a screwdriver, pliers, and a flush cutter. Additionally, you may want the sustenance of your choice. Assembly. Begin with the gears, and what you want to do with the gears is come in and remove all of the support from the flexures that doesn't need to be there. Just take your pliers and pull them out. In the model, there is a 0.25 millimeter gap between the surface of the model and the flexure on the part. It may require just a little bit of freeing to get it to actually move for you. Go to this little bit and press in, and now it's free to actuate. Press in, and now it's free to actuate. You don't have to get every last bit of it out because I made a little indentation in there that makes it so that the, the bearing will still sit flush. So you can just remove that, pick it out, and that's all you gotta do. Repeat that for all the gears and pop all the bearings in. If you prematurely stick the bearing in, you can use a spacer to just pop it right back out. Let us suppose you manage to break a flexure. You don't have to reprint the model. Should that happen, take some six millimeter M3 button head screws and screw those in to the 2.9 millimeter hole and they will just barely clip the edge can always add a washer to make it a little bit more secure. I did it previously on a big gear, which I have no plans to reprint, um, but these holes I just drilled and tapped. But I wanted to make it so you don't need a tap if this happens to you. It's the same process for this guy. And it just snaps in like so. On the cam surfaces, there's one side that's got this um, chamfer and the other side that doesn't what you want to do is find the side where the the normal to this plane is in line with that and orient it like that and align it the same way so again that goes through both of them then you want to take your cam and orient it so that the bevel side is up you take your second cam, find this groove right here, and align it so that the orientation of the two cams is the same. Bevel side, again, to be up, and you want these two grooves to be facing both the same direction. Orient it so that they, are, they have the same phase relative to the gear. So I have this groove right here matches that vertex right now. And now I am clipping that on like that. And then I will again do the same thing. So this vertex was the one we aligned here. We're gonna do the same thing on this one. And hopefully you can see
the flexures have engaged. So now this doesn't really want to come apart. It's pretty well held in place. Bring out the back plate. The three center pegs are shorter than the edge pegs. Make sure you engage the gears. Place them on together. Little seat. And then you can just press down on all of them. First, I will thread the gear into the drivetrain. And now it's at an angle. And then I'll reach in here and press on the center of the bearing and press down using the bearing so that I don't put excessive pressure into the flexures to get it started. Now that I've got that one engaged, now this is the tricky part. The next thing to do is to take your hopper. Now this one is a little bit different looking uh, because it has this bar uh, stuck on a fixed peg. On the final ones, there should be one more groove around here um, and that will make it assemble just slightly differently. This curved edge goes down. Now we're gonna rotate it until that interior edge right here is halfway dividing the circle behind it. Then we will orient the second cam so that the phase of this outside grooves looks visually about the same. And then we will visually make the inside pattern match up so that it looks the same. Once we've done that. And that will make their patterns exactly the same. Now we will rotate this 180 degrees. A simple solution to start with is to use a little bit of masking tape and just lock the gear train when you get it about where it needs to be. So now, the ram's head clips are offset on one wall. Take that offset and put it towards the inner wall and just slide down. now this piece is pretty secure. When you get that on, if you align this edge here so that the back edge here is just barely below this edge, then it should just be barely peeking up on the other side. That's what you want. Set this piece aside. Gather all the tubes and the springs. Take a pen, put a spring inside, Put the pin inside and it should nicely spring like that. Repeat for all the tubes. You should have about, about the length of this end piece. That should be at about the spring depth. Carefully go in. This part can be frustrating. If the tube springs uh, don't have a, quite enough compression, you can drop a square nut into the end and then put your cap on and that will give it considerably more throw. Next, you're gonna take your hopper bottom, take the end that sticks down on the flexures, clean out the sacrificial bridging on the inside using an X-Acto blade so that way the edges are clean. Press in the bearings. They should go roughly flush. You'll need the knob joiner, a knob, a crank, a spacer, washer. 
two omega clips and the long of the two shafts. Use the longer one. Decide which side you want the handle on. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to put it on this side. This is the top, this is the bottom. Using these pliers can assist on getting that to be locked on. Take the knob joiner, take the knob back washer, and it aligns like that. The mega clip goes through. And then that's secure. On the other side, stick that through. Take your two in plates. Position so that this square, the square edge are vertical on both halves. Position the handles so if they go to the right, and press down. There shouldn't be very much play when things are done. That's too much. That's, that's right. There's the short and the long legs. Take the short legs orient it so that this little tab goes outward and press it into the ram clips. Take the top plate, just rest it on all the flexures. started to engage this side. Now I'm going to very gently make sure the followers are all in the grooves and very gently make sure the phase angles on the two handles are about the same and very very gently rotate this into position and press down. Now, this does not want to stay here so much, so now we can quickly come along with our legs and clip them on. And now the assembly can be moved upright. Take the two remaining ram's head clips and install them. So now we're checking things. There's just a few more steps remaining. Take this movable baffle plate and clip it on like that. Put your lock clip on there. Set it on in, get it under. And then we have our needle gauge. Now tuning. An assortment of screws. Take the largest diameter in that assortment. This is an M5. And tune it until it will fall through. So we need to get it to the point where it just barely will not fall through. Now we need to verify that if we shake, it still does not fall through. Right now, it still does. So let's go back a little farther. And that catches. 
that will work for an M5. But should we wind up with, say, an M4, it will fall right through. Dump a bucket of screws in. Shake. The only screws that are down here are M4s, M3s, and smaller. And we repeat the process. We go down to the size of an M4. M5s, M4s. Let's repeat the process. It's about the right there. Make a note on the dial that that's the M3 setting. Sometimes these long ones can be a pain. And there we are. We have M5, M4, M3, smaller than M3s, these are M2.5s, and M2s, can we go smaller? The consistency and spacing between the bars is generally around a half a millimeter of accuracy, which is not good enough to differentiate M2 from M2.5. However, if you put them only on one bar, and space it just right, and then apply a little shaking, then only the M2s will fall through. So it can separate, but it's not very reliable, and I would really only depend on this machine to separate um, M2 from M3, but not M2 from M2.5.